So AMD is being a little deceptive. And I'm gonna go over that in this video. I wanna give you guys some positive energy first. I am extremely happy about Ryzen 9000. I'm currently on an Intel platform. After coming from an AMD platform originally, it was the 3950X, then I jumped to the 13700K, and now I'm thinking about going back to Ryzen 9000. It's shaping up really good, but before the Ryzen 9000 stuff gets brought up, I really wanna bring up this benchmark thing that they showed off going back to AM4 on the 5900 XT and the 5800 XT that are new uh, AM4 CPUs coming out this year. So to start off, I watched the entire live event and when those CPUs were shown off in a very short segment, I was like, damn, these are pretty impressive. In fact, they are beating my 13700K and I recalled being on the AM4 platform and going, Shit, I have to upgrade from this platform to get all the performance out of my 4090. Yes, I can go to something like a 5800X3D, but I really didn't not, I didn't want to do that because I need more than eight cores to do video editing and all sorts of other things. So I skipped that and I just jumped right to the uh, Intel platform, which is the 13700K setup. And I've been lukewarm about it since, so I've kind of been excited to go back to AMD. But the whole point was I saw these benchmarks and something just seemed off. And I wasn't validated until just earlier when Hardware and Box posted this video. Confirmed that they did use a, a Radeon RX 6600 XT because- It wasn't even a 6600 XT, it was the RX 6600. Oh. The non-XT model, I'm pretty sure. We'll show the, we'll show the, um, the footnote that gives the performance details in, on in, screen. In any but, case, yeah. the result is pretty much the same. They're using an older, previous generation entry-level GPU, I think yeah, is fair to yeah. say. So AMD took a Ryzen 9 series processor, sorry, this is a third gen box, and a 6600 non-XT to basically test them together. And then they compared those same tests with something like the 13700K and in the other uh, little piece there, a 13600K. And to get a performance metric, that's just totally wrong. You do not test things like that. You have to test with the highest end product available, or for in their case, they could have tested with something like the 7900 XTX and then compared it if they don't want to use the 4090. Let's continue. I guess unaware of what they were claiming based on that. So they were claiming that their uh, Zen 3 CPUs that they're rehashing, the bin CPUs, uh, in the range of a few percent faster than the 13th gen, uh, well, 13700K and 13600K. Yep. Now, those are next generation CPUs when comparing those two parts. So yep. that would be weird if rehashed older generation CPUs were somehow a little bit faster than Intel CPUs and Intel generally has around that point in time had a leadership in gaming performance. It's better, it's not just better by a little bit, it's miles better by, better. it's miles better. Miles yeah. better. Yeah. So. This is very bad by uh, AMD, and then they very misleading. They also did a uh, what was it? The 5800 XT versus the 13600K. Again, they claimed that the 5800 XT was a few percent faster than the Core i5 processor, when in reality the Core i5 processor is 28 percent faster. And the, the 5800 XT is uh, a slightly higher clocked 5800X. It's, it's a 5800X with a two percent boost to the boost clock. So. So I feel like most of you will understand what AMD is doing, but to kind of further explain it, what they're doing is they're not taking a top of the line card to show the difference of performance between the CPUs. They're taking a mid range or a, a card that is actually gonna be GPU limited. So the CPU is gonna do as good of a job as it possibly can. There's gonna be variables. You're gonna have variables that, that like for an example, some games will run a little bit better on an AMD chip versus the Intel chip and you throw this card in there that's gonna be running maxed out and you're creating basically a little bit of a bottleneck. I hate using that term, but by doing that, it leaves this nice flat line for them to show off on stage. They can show off a few of the games that perform a little bit better on an AMD CPU and they go, hey, look, we're, we're doing 12% better in this one game. We're doing 2% better in this one game. But the reality is if you were to pair a very fast card with those older processors, the gap is gonna go way back big again, gonna turn into a big 
30 to 40 percent gap between the old cpus that they're refreshing and the semi-old intel cpus honestly this is kind of disappointing from a person who really does like the amd cpus becoming more and more of a fan especially after having a ton of intel latency issues and having all these problems on my own personal platform after coming from such a rock solid 3950x system like that was one of my favorite systems i've had in years i just never had any issues always just worked perfect and i've been through quite a lot of computers dating all the way back to x58 i've had every intel hedt platform x99 x299 and every one of the systems has had some little something here or there that you know would drive you nuts but that 3950 system i was so jealous of it after i jumped over to intel and i really wanted to go back to amd but it's not cool if they're doing these kind of like dishonest practices and being shady um it's like so unnecessary because <laughs> am4 is still so cool and there are so many people who still want am4 like you can pair a, a 3070 a 6700 xt you can even pair like uh, let's say up to like a 3090 with a 5800 x3d and so my point is is that they really don't have a, a need to have even had those come out to be honest maybe they should have just continued selling their regular cpus for another year or something but instead they're doing the shady marketing trick of re-releasing cpus that are just slightly better and then selling them to you again and it's like that whole graph right there that totally would have tricked me a couple years ago when i was buying the 4090 if i saw that and i was like and if i didn't, if I didn't really look into it and i just looked at that and i was like you know what I don't even need to upgrade my platform. I'm just gonna drop in the 5900 XT. I don't know why the 5800 X3D is like more expensive and just bought that one CPU. It's like, I would have fallen for the trap. Now I'm beating myself up a little bit there. I would have probably got it home, benchmarked it and realized something was wrong or even saw or did more research, which you, you should always do more research. Anytime you're buying something really expensive, do your research and so it would be stupid but people do fall for this kind of stuff sometimes and it's not even really being stupid it's just you look at a graph like that it's really really bad that's such a bad thing to show people that it's just so totally untrue and imagine i, I always think of these situations because a couple of years ago during the pandemic people were buying parts and they were holding on to them to build these pcs for extended periods of time i had friends that were holding on to parts for like an entire year and so you know let's say you held on to some of them past the return window and then come to find out this thing does not perform anywhere near what you thought it did that's bad and people still do that today people love to buy little parts in segments which i don't always suggest that by the way i suggest save your money up and wait for a good time where you can find like a month a solid month where maybe some sales are hitting and you just kind of tackle everything as much as you can within that month because when you buy and hold on to parts as time goes on they devalue uh new stuff comes out things change so it's just always kind of a better idea to try to stick within a shorter window if you can save your money put your money aside don't pile up all the parts all the time um, unless it's like cases or like power supplies or something that doesn't really get dated as much i did want to mention one other thing that i saw from uh ufd tech it was a uh, a leak about the 9600x actually being a really decent overclocker and obviously take everything with a grain of salt but if the next generation is actually decent at overclocking that would be pretty cool and unlike the typical ryzen path of always being you know you can turn on pbo but ideally you, most people keep ryzen cpus at stock settings so that's something cool and different um i would love to see more about that if it's true or not true and yeah so that's gonna do it for this video guys drop a like leave a comment let me know what you think and i will see you guys in another video bye